Hey, everybody, this is Pastor Ephraim Smith, and I am with my much better half, Donisha Norwood Smith. How you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm so honored to be sheltered in place with you. Don't believe him. It, no, Don't not, believe him. that's how I really feel. It is. <laughs> hey, we are so glad that you are here to participate in another prayer night. The, these gatherings like this have just been powerful and it, and it's powerful because God is among us first and foremost, but it's powerful because you're here with us to have this time of prayer. And we have some great folks with us. We've got Gus and Krista Armstead from the Midtown campus. We have Kurt and Kelly Harlow from the Granite Bay campus. We have the illustrious, the founding pastor of Bayside Church, Ray Johnston. <sighs> okay, and then we also have Amy Bangs who is with us and uh, I think I covered everybody that's with us, uh, that's going to be with us tonight, and it's just going to be a great time to be with you and to be in prayer. Before I open us up with a prayer to get into the prayer, I want to read a text from Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Galatians 3, verse 28 says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus. You know, this text is not saying we're ignoring who we are by gender, by ethnicity. Uh, th those things matter. Uh, but what it's saying is they're not barriers. They're not barriers. Our, our distinctives are not walls. And you know what? Like never before in this online format, we've been gathering as a multi-ethnic, multicultural, Christ-centered, multi-campus church online. And so uh, I, I, I'm really believing that once we are back in an on-site mode, we are not gonna lose this spirit of this just diverse gathering of our community like this online. So let me pray for us. Dear God, in this season we find ourselves in, Lord, we pray that we would experience you in a significant way. That in this online way of gathering as your church, we get to experience the diversity that you've blessed us with in this church. And this diversity is not a hindrance. It's a blessing. It is like a tremendous way of us to get a sneak preview of heaven right now. So God, let this prayer time tonight be heaven entering into our homes, heaven being real for us now, experiencing what it means to be citizens of your kingdom. God, in this situation we find ourselves in, we can still be transformed. We can still be moved in incredible ways because the Savior is in the situation. And we're grateful for this, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So I am going to turn it over now to Pastor Ray Johnston. Hey, thank you, Ephraim. And uh, everybody, welcome to the prayer meeting. We are really glad you're here. Um, I want to give you a couple updates, uh, but the deepest thing. I think I've heard anybody say in a long time, I was on a call this morning and one of the pastors on the call said, we need to be Easter people in a Good Friday world. Mm -hmm. But that was brilliant because it's almost like, it feels like permanent Good Friday has arrived. We need to be people living with Easter and with hope and things like that. And, um, and so I actually wanted to say there are some Easter-like things happening through churches all over the place. Um, you know, for example, um, our, just on our Midtown campus, they have already fed over 6,000 people, okay? Um, 150 people a day, effort, it might be above that, 150 people a day are getting hot showers there, which basically keeps them cleansed. I mean, it's just an amazing thing going on there. Um, the medical community, um, Kurt and Kelly, you're one of the construction sites. Um, so far, people have made way over 4,000 masks and given those to folks. Um, matter of fact, in Folsom Prison, we have Bayside is in Folsom Prison on the men's side and the women's side. 
in Folsom Prison on the women's side, they actually, this is historic, never happened before, they, let, they brought in 10 sewing machines and these women in the Folsom Prison are sewing masks for healthcare workers to save lives. I mean, just absolute crazy cool stuff um, going on, even in the midst of crisis. And I think it's God's people being Easter people in a Good Friday world. And, um, and I called, we have a guest here, and it's Chris Hushaw. And Chris is the pastor of Cornerstone Church down in uh, Palm Desert, California. And Chris is in a great church of, you know, about 400 people. And I have a heart for pastors and for churches, especially churches that are smaller than we are, um, because they, we have resources they don't have. So I called Chris and said, hey, how you doing? And what we, I, want to pr I want all of us to pray for our churches today, all of our churches in America. Um, and Jesus said, I'll, I will build my church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. And so, Chris, uh, first of all, welcome. I'm glad you joined us. Thanks for diving Thanks, into this man. gathering. Hey, all. And, uh, Chris, my first question is this. Um, I we called the other day, and it has not been an easy few weeks. What's happening, my friend? No, I, I'm sure like many churches, uh, we have had to move and shift uh, quickly. All of our ministries, our fellowship, our Bible studies online uh, for uh, the resources of a church of 400. Uh, it just feels like I'm, I, the whole staff is working overtime trying to keep up with the curve. And I, I just feel like every day I'm just a little bit behind trying to, to spend a little bit more time trying to gather up. It, it's, been, it's been tough. Yep. Um, the... What's been the most hopeful thing? You know, when we started this, uh, our, our first week, we our giving just crashed to about 50% of normal giving during this time. The next week, it went up to 75. We kind of climbed up to even, and I, I thought that was a great story. And then this last Sunday, praise God, we went to 163% of our normal giving. It's like God's people are, are, are just coming forward and seeing the ministry advance, and, and, and that was such a blessing for us as we were wondering if are we going to have to put uh, ministries on hold? Are we going to have to let staff go? Uh, we don't have that big of a reserve anyway. And down here in the desert, we got summer coming, uh, which is also a hard season. And so what, what a blessing to see God, just his provision come. Yep. And um, one of the reasons I called Chris the other day is I heard somebody say, large churches will survive this because they have resources and and little churches of 70 with one pastor and no staff, they'll survive it. But the middle-sized two, three, four, five, six hundred person churches, they are going to be lucky to come out of this still in existence. And um, the United States, with the CARES Act, has basically made that stuff possible. And when I phoned you, I went, you guys were early to put in your application, but then you got some bad news from the bank. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we have... Uh, five services in four different languages uh, from different sizes. And so we thought this was going to be our way to kind of make it through the next six, seven months. Uh, and then uh, we put our, our application in first in line, they told us. And then U.S. Bank, who we bank with, told us that uh, they're going to service for-profit uh, loans first and, and to get to the back of the line uh, as a nonprofit. And what, what a discouraging thing to say to a church that's, you know, just feeling like we're just try trying to survive this week. That's right. Yeah. It's funny. We've been brainstorming. First of all, that's discrimination. Uh, we've been brainstorming, though, how do we find connections on that one? But ultimately, I think, Chris, the reason I wanted to thank you for coming on is, I mean, there are 360,000 churches in America, 350,000 of them are your size. And, and I think we need to pray for the future. And Chris, you don't know this, but um, I asked your son to come online with us and pray for you and for your church and for churches like it. And so Christian, if you can turn on your camera and join us. Hey, welcome my friend. Hey, hey. So, and those of you who don't know, this, uh, Chris Hushaw is the pastor at Cornerstone. Christian is the worship leader at one of our churches. And hey, anything you want to say to your dad? And then would you pray for your dad and for his church and for other churches? Yeah, I would love to pray for him. And dad, I'm so proud of who you are. And uh, I'm just proud to be your son. Um, I'd love to pray for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, you are the ultimate provider. God, that has never changed and it's not going to change now. 
God, and we know that and we believe that. So we pray that today that you would just provide, um, you'd provide for churches this size, that you would provide hope, um, you would provide resources um, financially, um, you would provide um, vision, wisdom, um, and God, we just pray that over these churches, God, and we pray that specifically over my dad and Cornerstone Church, God, what an amazing church it's been for so many people, including me, um, God, so we pray a blessing over them, we pray a blessing over his family, his church, and uh, his ministry, God, Lord, we love you, we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, and everyone said virtually online together, amen. 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 Love you, Thank you, my friend. Hey, love you. Thanks for having me on. Love you, Dad. Love you. I just think, after I'll be right back to you, folks, we have got to keep our churches prayed for, supported, pastors encouraged. I mean, they're the people strengthening people on the inside so that they can handle it. So, John, who's who's next? We'll come back to Ephraim. Yeah, Amy Banks for healthcare. Hi, Amy. Okay. Hi. <laughs> you know, I don't know um, when you guys asked me to come and pray for healthcare. I don't know if you know, but I'm an I'm an RN myself, and so obviously the healthcare um, community is super close to my heart. And um, I haven't been working in the hospital in some time, but I was thinking about back when I was back in nursing school and learning so much about Florence Nightingale, who was this iconic wartime nurse who was on the battle lines during, during the Crimean War. And there's a quote that she says, it says, how very little can be done under the spirit of fear. And I thought to myself, as we were going to just pray tonight for the healthcare community, how important it is to not just pray for protection, but to also pray for courage, that they wouldn't operate under that spirit of fear. And um, it says in Psalm 121, seven through eight, the Lord will keep them from all harm he will watch over their life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. And so many of us aren't coming and going very many places. <laughs> and we forget about those that are coming and going a lot. They're coming and going to and from their healthcare facilities. They're coming and going to and from the hospital. And so um, we just want to pray protection over them, pray protection over their families and their coming and going. And if they would just um, be able to do what God has called them to do with courage and that they wouldn't um, have that spirit of fear. So let's pray. God, we come before you tonight, dear Lord. And we lift up, dear God, these healthcare workers, dear Lord, that are on the front lines of all of this, God. And we pray, Lord, that they would not have a spirit of fear, but that you would give them a sound mind, dear Lord, as they go and they just do what you have called them to do in this setting, dear Lord. May they be courageous in what you have called them to do. God, may they not just deliver medicine and may they not just deliver health care, but God, may they deliver the good news of Jesus Christ, dear Lord. May they deliver hope, dear God. May they deliver so much to people that are in such a time of need. We ask that your protection would be upon them, that your protection would be upon their coming and their going. As they go into their healthcare facilities, as they go into their places of work, dear God, we ask, dear Lord, that you would surround them with your protection. May they be untouched in this time, dear God. May they come home then, dear God, and may their families be untouched during this time. We ask that you would go before them, that you would go beside them, and that you would go behind them that you would give them the wisdom that they need to do what you have called them to do, that you would give them the courage to do what you have called them to do. And we ask, dear God, that your blessing and your favor would fall upon them, God, that everything that they put their hands to in Jesus' name would be blessed, the people they come in contact with, the patients they care for, God. May the blessing of God be extended through them, dear God, as they take care of these people. And those healthcare workers that don't know you, we pray for them, dear God. We pray on their behalf, dear Lord. They may not know to call out to you, but God, we call out to you on their behalf, that your protection would be around them, that they would, you would surround them during this time. God, we thank you, dear Lord, that you are in every detail of our life. God, you are always with us. You are with us in all things, and you are with us at all times. And so, God, we just cover, dear Lord, our healthcare workers tonight in your precious name. Amen. 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 Thanks. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Amy. And now we're we have. Back. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm back. See, can't keep me out of prayer. Tell you that right now. Can't shut me out of prayer. Come on, Ephraim. 
<laughs> so uh, Kurt and Kelly Harlow are going to pray for church leaders everywhere tonight. Thank you, Ephraim. Uh, you know, I just want to say it's Wednesday while you're watching this. Maybe you're watching a few days after whatever, but pastors are already worried about Sunday. And man, I want to tell you, we've prayed for the medical people. We've prayed for the businesses. I just, I want to, all you people out there that love pastors, and I know there's a ton of you Bayside's and even more, I want to ask you to pray for pastors and board members, even small group leaders, because coming up to the weekend, what they want to do most of all is love on people. And man, it is hard when you're doing it through a camera lens. They can do it if we pray for them, but it's hard. I'm just thinking about what Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy. You could just feel how much Paul was praying for Timothy when they were apart. In fact, uh, Kelly, we just read just a little bit of the beginning of 2 Timothy there. Okay, starting at verse 3. I thank God, whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. You can feel the passion of Paul for his friend, Timothy. That's what pastors are feeling for their congregations. Would you join me right now and pray for all of our spiritual leaders? Father God, I thank you so much for the heart of those women and men that have decided to give their life for the church. God, I pray for that pastor like we did of a church of 50 and that pastor of a church of 50,000 God, that you would show them how to minister to their flock in this time. God, I pray against worry. I pray against fear. I pray against the concern for the saints that leads to an attitude of anxiety. Instead, Lord, let the peace of Christ guard their hearts and let that passion they have for their people come out in their prayer closet, especially in this season. Lord, as many of them are preaching, even today, their Easter message, give them a boldness, give them a fire. As many of them are organizing things behind the scene, whether it be technology, God, or online small groups where people are still connecting, give them the wisdom, the discernment, discernment. Give them, Father God, the smarts to do ministry with the same authenticity as the first century using this 23rd century technology. God, give them the anointing, your Holy Spirit, to do and be who they were meant to do and be even in this season. And Lord, let us be people that keep praying for our spiritual leaders throughout all of this. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Uh, you know, during this time, we want to continue to pray for our government leaders. It, it is so important that, um, that right now there's no function by partisan sides, um, no divisions by federal or state or local. Like, we, we just really need God working upon the hearts of men and women as public servants to work collectively uh, to, to move our nation forward. So uh, I'm going to take some time right now and pray for government leaders. God, we, um, we lift up the president, the vice president. We lift up our Senate, our Congress. Lord, we lift up governors. We lift up mayors, city council members, uh, folks uh, behind the scenes uh, that are in, in government roles uh, to solve this issue. God, we pray for wisdom. We pray for humility. We pray for clarity. We pray for strength. God, I even pray in this moment for government leaders that haven't given their life to you, that in this moment, they would say yes to you, that they would respond to your love and grace, that they would understand in this moment that there's a need to lean into the creator of the universe, that there's a need to depend on one beyond their political philosophies and platforms, uh, beyond um, just leaning into their own understanding, their own knowledge base. I pray, God, that there would be a public official that would say yes to Jesus, 
in this moment, this week. I pray that this Resurrection Sunday, someone would say yes to you. So God, uh, give our government leaders uh, the knowledge they need. Give them the, the strength and endurance they need, Lord, to, uh, to lead, to serve, uh, to collaborate, Lord God. And so we just pray for our nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, now I want to uh, hand it over to uh, Gus and Krista Armstead. They are going to pray uh, for us next. I would like to, I want to read a scripture and then I want to share an encouraging story. Psalms 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who have lost hope. And so I just want to encourage, uh, we are going to be praying for families that um, have, or have COVID-19. I got a call this past week uh, from a friend of mine. Her father is 89 years old, and he was admitted a few days ago to the hospital, and they uh, diagnosed him with, with the virus. And I just checked on her the other day, and she said that he's doing much better. And wow. because of prayer, because of believers, they called for prayer. Uh, he should be going home in a few days. So I just want to say again, you know, there's hope in the midst of darkness that God is with us. And so let me, let me just pray for that. Father, I just want to say thank you, God, for um, you showing us that you, that you care, uh, that you are near to those that are brokenhearted and that we find our hope in you, Lord. You've been that for me so many different times in my life where I've experienced discouragement. Um, you've been close to me, Lord, and it's because of that that I even made it through that time. Lord, I lift up families who are uh, desperate right now, who are brokenhearted, who are burdened, who are uh, discouraged, Father, and I just pray that you would intervene, that you would use um, divine measures and even natural measures uh, to minister to them, to encourage them, and to bring them hope, Lord. And we just thank you um, during this time that we get to remember what you've done for us. You are our hope, Lord. And so we pray that same um, message and that same strength and courage to those that are struggling right now. And we ask this in your name, the name that is above all name, the name that you said we find healing in. Um, we thank you for that. God, God, we lift up the families that are, uh have lost their family members through mm -hmm. this virus. And uh, we pray that you would encourage their hearts, mm -hmm. that you would uh, comfort them. Thank you. God, all over this world uh, where this virus has been affecting and, and taking lives, God, we pray mm -hmm. because some of these families aren't even able to say a proper goodbye. Mm -hmm. And God, we pray that you would just touch their hearts and that, uh, that you would just give them some comfort uh, God, we, we pray for those that are even separated uh, because of the virus and can't even see their families. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just pray, God, that your spirit would, would, would move, that it would move during these uncertain times. Mm -hmm. But during times like these, we need a Savior. Mm -hmm. And we pray that uh, Jesus Christ, our Savior, would uh, be so... Uh, evident and so visible in all of these challenges that we're, that we're facing mm -hmm. and that someone would come to know and understand and get to know Christ in a very real way. Mm -hmm. So God, we lift you up. We thank you for who you are and we thank you for being with us during these times and we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Armsteads. Man, you know, I almost want to pray that God would bless me with the praying voice that Gus Armstead has. That's got to be the coolest. <laughs> I wish I had, I could pray like, like that. I just don't have it in my tonsils, but uh, is Chris cool. Hushaw still, uh, is he still on Pastor Chris Hushaw? Yes, I'm here. Okay. I'm going to ask you to close us in prayer in just a few minutes, but before we have uh, the closing prayer, I just want to remind everybody of two things. Hey, Resurrection Sunday, is coming this weekend. And there's a couple of things we would love for you to join us on. One is we are having the very first time in the history of Bayside Church, the 
Good Friday service, the online Good Friday gathering. First time in history there's ever been a Good Friday, Good God, Good Friday online service. And we want you to be a part of it. It's going to be at noon and 7 p.m. Uh, the best way to know the times and everything is download the Bayside app. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. You can follow any campus you want. You can follow every single campus. And also, uh, you can go online, baysideonline.com, and you can find out about our Good Friday service. We really want you to be a part. And then this weekend is our Easter services. And so again, through the Bayside app, through BaysideOnline.com, you click on any campus you want. You know, I would just, I would check out Easter from like three or four different Bayside campuses this weekend. I would just, just do it. Just come on, spend the weekend with us. And so uh, we're, we're excited. Every campus is going to have their campus or one of their campus pastors preaching. It's going to be awesome. Ray's going to be on every one. I don't know if this has ever happened in the history of Bayside. Ray's going to show up at every Bayside campus this weekend. It's a marathon for him. I don't know how he does it. So we want you to participate with us this weekend. And I'm just going to take that as a yes. I'm going to take that as a yes. So, Absolutely. Hey, Ephraim. Uh, real quick, Kurt. Yeah. Kurt, you just shot the message, right? Just literally walk from here to there. If you get on this weekend, you will see this shirt. It's my Easter Sunday shirt. My daughter, my wife ironed it for me. You got one shirt. The, hey, tell what's the message? The message is about um, uh, <laughs> this is how bad. Oh, this isn't good. This is the part we added out, right? The message is about <laughs> moments of change. What, oh, what's, what's Defining moment. Thank you. <laughs> every life, every life has defining moments. Your first kiss, your first child, your first driver's license. When you get rid of the first child out of your house, all those defining moments, we remember where we were at, what happened to us, who we were. This moment right here is the ultimate defining moment for our generation. But we're going to learn how to get through it by going back to the defining moment, which is the very first Resurrection Sunday. What God did to those people then is what he wants to do to us now. You got to find out what that is. And that defining moment it doesn't have to be a thing that will take you down. It's a thing that can lift you up and make you come out stronger. Awesome. So that would be good. It's interesting. We, and the... Uh, all of us pastors have been have spent uh, over a week going what's our next series about and it's the thing thing we're going to take that defining moments theme and kind of what we realize is none of us have faced anything like this in our entire life so we need to do the most important message series we have ever done and so we're pretty much going to say uh, the the single most important thing is to stand strong during shaken times because people are going to come out of this developed and deepened or destroyed and it's all going to be what's going on in the inside of everybody so we're going to unleash week after week one thing the bible says to build into your lives into your family if you'll build those things in straight out of the bible then you will have a future and a hope and if you don't build these things in you're empty on the inside which means fear and anxiety and all that stuff's going to rush in so Really, really huge deal. So, Ephraim, should we have Chris Hushaw say anything you want in close? That sounds great to me. Let's do me it. Too. Chris. Chris, take us home. I just want to thank uh, Ray and for your leadership, for the whole staff for Bayside. Your reach is incredible. The anointing and the blessing that I feel 500 miles away by not by knowing that we're in this together, we're walking through this together, and I'm not alone. My congregation is not alone. Thank you for the blessing. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you're bigger than anything. Uh, you, 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 you have us in your arms. You're, you're moving us forward. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming, and we see the Easter. We see the resurrection, the power of the resurrection coming in the great light of this dark moment. Lord, we just give ourselves to you. We remember you in that, that last evening with your disciples as you had shared a meal and as you've washed their feet as a servant, and then you said to them, I just want you to remember this one thing. 
Uh, you're to abide. You're, you're to cling on. You're to hold on. Uh, be the branches to the vine. All you need to do is hold on, and I'm going to give you fruit. Lord, we pray that your blessing would be poured out on every church across America, across this world right now. Your blessings would be poured out in such a way that the light of Easter would shine brightly in the darkness of Friday. Uh, Lord, we want to. We, we, we can't wait to see what you have for us ahead. The fruit is coming to the branches as we abide in you. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So thank you all for joining us. And uh, we'll be back here again next Wednesday, 7 p.m. But before that, we're going to see you on Good Friday, and we're going to see you on Easter weekend. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. Be encouraged. Bye, everybody. Bye.